using the iPad version of Affinity Photo version 2 for the masking and colouring exercise is a lot of fun and it's really quite different to using the desktop. Controls are in the different place, all sorts of things like that. Not easy to find. So let's step through the same exercise, Wolby. Let's get right to it. Alright guys, so this is the iPad version of the masking, master masking tutorial. <laughs> nice little mouthful. Okay, now I've already done the beginning of this and you can see there's the girl and there's the fire extinguisher. But let me show you how I achieve this on the iPad. Now you'll see when I, let me go up there to the move tool. And you'll see when I touch the screen, you can see there's a blue circle there. So keep your eye out for that if you get lost. Now the first thing I want to do is put a picture of the fire extinguisher. Now we go to the stock studio, which is down there. And up here I'll type in... Fire, E-X-T-I-N-G-U-I-S-H-E-R, fire extinguisher. Why is that not come? There we go. Let's use two words, see if I can find that. There we go. There's our fire extinguisher. A little bit of misspelling. Okay, so let's select the fire extinguisher. Drag it over there, downloading, and there it is. Now over here, I'll turn on snapping. And you can see, there it is, dead center. Now the secret with this was, we're going to select the object so that we can create a mask from it. Now, on that, we go to Flood Selection. We go to Smart Selection Tool. Now, we've got a 64-pixel brush over there that you can see, which is quite large. I've got a, an absolute feeling I'm going to have to reduce that to do the rest. There's all the fire extinguisher itself done. Now let's reduce the width. Just tap the numbers and we'll go down to 10, 10 pixels. And you brush along there and it selects the 10 pixels. Now somebody asked me, why did I use a fire extinguisher and what's the fire extinguisher for? Well, the fire extinguisher image is a nice clean edged image, as you can see. So as the starting object, it's a really easy one to use. Don't try doing something with lots of trees and blades of grass or a model's hair, things like that. They're very difficult to do. Okay, now that's fully selected. Let's go to Refine, which is up the top here. That one there. And you can see that looks pretty good. But what I want to use the Refine tool for more than anything is the selection. Now, we can select a mask and that's what we want. You layer with mask. No, we just want a mask. And then we go to the tick. See, there's a tick and a cross over the side here. We go to tick. And the background's gone. Now, isn't that very clever? Now, go back here. Because I'm using this one, fire extinguisher, just tap save. But if it's your first time, and just think of this as your first time doing this, so that's your first fire extinguisher. Remember, I had a few others there. There's the fire extinguisher girl behind it. There's the fire extinguisher that I had first behind it. 
So I just created a new layer. Now, you can see that layer there. You can see that mask. And that's the one we've got selected. If you want to create just a simple mask out of that, a simple image without the mask applied, you go to there, make sure your mask is selected, and on the tools here, click on rasterize and trim. Trim means you rasterize the image and trim off the excess. If there's a huge image with lots of stuff around it that goes out over your canvas, it'll trim that off too. So rasterize and trim, and there it is. See, there's the one, and it's just it's now just a pixel layer. Isn't that lovely? Oops. And that's what we've got so far. Now, the next stage in this whole process, and I won't go further with that one, although I could, but as I've said previously in the desktop version, um, a fire extinguisher is easy to easy to define and to pick out, but it's pretty boring, let's face it. What we want is another image. Now, I'll scroll up here, go to the Stock Studio, and this time type in, oops, type in girl. There's an image on here I like to use because it's quite, it looks complex, but it's not, if you get what I mean. Now, it's a very large image, as you can see. Just let me get rid of that. And I'll go to the Move tool again so that I can select that image. There we go, image selected. But I want to reduce the size of it because it scrolls off the top. Now, how do you do that comfortably? Select that. Put the anchor point in the middle. Turn the chain on. See the chain between width and height? There it is unlocked, there it is locked. So altering one will alter the other. Now I want to reduce that in size, so I just drag my Apple Pencil down from that one and... Oh, that'll probably do. Now, move tool selected, yes, I want to put that right on the center. Now, I don't want to enlarge that image, but I do want to enlarge my work area. And again, we go to the Smart Selection Brush. That's that one there. And I've only got 10 pixels here now in width. But you can see by just tapping that image, it flows out across the image quite nicely. So it doesn't have to be... A very large brush to start with. Now you can see what we've got here. inside the material and down to the girl's head is also selected. Now, we don't want to include that in the final image, do we? So we've got to get rid of it. Now, while I haven't done the rest of the body yet, and that's okay, we'll get to that, I've got all of the shirt done. Any of the lines I can see there under the shirt down there. Okay, we'll just leave that bit there for the moment because we've got to go back and modify that. So we go to subtract and using the subtract option on the brush, we're subtracting that middle bit and subtracting that middle bit. Now, there's a little bit of hair there that we're going to miss, and you can fiddle around and get that if you like, but for the time being, that'll do. 
Now we go back to add, move the image up. You can see it selected the entire leg then. There's the sock done. There's the leg. There's the shoe. Okay. Now that's looking... Oops. Just use the backspace key. We want to get rid of that little bit. That's looking pretty good. Now, we apply the refine tool. And you can see there, that looks pretty good actually. Selection. Go to selection. And just mask. And then apply, which is the tick over here on the left. And there it is. There's the background gone. Now, while that's still selected, you'll notice, interestingly enough, that this time it places it on top of that image of the girl. And this time we're going to rasterize and trim again. Okay, there's that image layer with the mask and everything in the image layer. Now I can go and rasterize and trim and what we've got is just the pixel layer. There's the fire extinguisher behind it. There's the fire extinguisher not behind it. Now, again, I'm going to leave the fire extinguisher where it is because we don't want that in there. Now, the next phase, we're going to add the coloured outer glow around the girl. And that's very neat. But on the iPad, a little trickier. Now then, we've got our image there. And what we're going to do to start with is put a rectangle behind it. A rectangular background. Now, that's fairly straightforward. Let's go over here and I'll select that part and I'll select rectangle because that's what I want now there's no color there at the moment but that's all right we'll put one in defaults to black which is what I was using before now that's okay there we go nice black rectangle and it blanks out the image which is oh okay well let's move that down so it doesn't blank out the image and we can adjust the image Let's get out of rectangle. We don't want to go inadvertently drawing rectangles around the place. There we go. We've got that centered. It's a, it's a bit lower than I'd like, but I'll move that up. There we go. It doesn't need to be exactly. But okay, it's centered on the image. That's good. Now we've got the image and we've got that. But what we want to do with that while we're here is just... Adjust it a little bit so it doesn't look quite so bold. We'll go down there. Let's make that a linear fill, shall we? And the bottom is black and the top we want as white. There you go. Now there's a linear gradient in there. And it's just white and black at the moment. That's all we want. No dramas. And now there's our... There's our mask there that's got the selection the selection mask, and you can see that there if I expand that. Now, what I'm going to do with that is duplicate it. That's fairly straightforward. Up to the top, duplicate. Now, we've got two of them. So, let's hide the top one. We've still got the bottom one, and that's the one we want. Remember, we're there. We're on the move tool. And we're there. Now let's go and put a fill layer on that image there. This is fairly straightforward, but it's really interesting effect, the end result. And we can see our boundary there. There we go. Just bring it down all the way to the bottom. There we go. Is that 90 degrees? It seems to be. There we go. That's got it. It just looked a little off-center. Now, we want the top one. So we select the top circle and change that color to red. 
Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? See, we've still got that, that line there, that layer there selected, and it's red. But let's go back to the fill layer. We're still on there. Go to the bottom, select the bottom dot, and let's change that to uh, green. And you can see that's really green, all the, up, almost halfway down. Red, blue, green. Now let's go to the center, put a dot in there. And what's a complementary color for that? Blue. So there we go. We've got red, blue, green. Let's take that blue up a little bit. There we go. Bring the red down a little bit. Lovely. The green and the green shoes, the green trousers. You can put all sorts of colours in there. Now, we're going to actually distort that quite a bit. So what we're going to do is go to the filters and we're going to add a live filter. That's that one there. And look for ABCD Gaussian Blur, which is right there. Now, the Gaussian Blur, 100% fill, but we want the radius right out there. So that's quite dramatic. Let's have a look at it. Okay, now, what's the good of that? Because the moment we turn on that layer, you can see that rather than just have a Gaussian blur on the original image, we've actually created a Gaussian blur on the colored fill. So we've got a different colored range, different range of colors around the Gaussian blur. And that looks very nice. Ah, but we've still got this white and black background. And guess what? We can do exactly the same with that by going to the fill. Select the bottom layer. Select the colors. And you know what I like, don't you? Viva Magenta. Woohoo! Now, that's a bit richer around the top. But we can go up there. Viva Magenta. Complementary colors, oh, could be, could be, could be, could be. Mm, that might be. That's ah, lowered a bit now. We can lower that down there a bit. And the top is nice. That's not too bad at all, is it? That's a complementary colour to Viva Magenta. Down at the bottom we've got pure Viva Magenta. Let's go back to there and have a look. There's our image. Nicely coloured, lovely background. And three layers. Too simple. What can you do with masking? You can do all sorts of things. Now, if we go to export, we can export our PNG, share, save to images. Now it's automatically saved it to photos, which is where I want it. Let's go and have a look in photos. And there it is. Look at that. Too beautiful. And what did it take? A few moments. And that's all there is to it, folks.